Let's go. Oh, why you look nervous, bro? Relax, man. No, no, I got you. you. you look look nervous, do I look nervous you or was he one shaking right now? Yeah, All right. So, oh, we are. We are. We're going to have fun with this. So, oh, we are. We are. Oh, yeah. We are. Welcome everybody, God bless you all. Today we're going to be doing a review of the discussion between Uthman ibn Farooq, Uthman ibn Fibin, God Logic Apologetics, Daughter of Christ's response video to this discussion, Uthman's response to that, and then Daughter of Christ's follow-up. Before we get into it, I just want to say what we're going to see today from Uthman is nothing short of deception, miscitations, misrepresentations. This guy is a straight up fabricator. There's no way around it. After you see this video, you're going to know for a matter of fact that this guy is a fabricator, a deceiver, and a fraud. In the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, volume number six, page number 479. In the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, volume number six, page number 479. This is the Hadith Sanadan. What you're about to see is Uthman quoting a Hadith, attributing it to Omar, and then he skips down to a footnote and claims that the footnote is from Omar. And the footnote has a typo in it. The typo in the footnote, not in the actual Hadith, is what he's basing his entire argument on. حدثنا أبو بكر حدثنا الوكيع المبارك الحسن عن عمر. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Why is he saying the chain of the hadith with all the names and then not reading the words of the hadith and going straight to the footnote, pretending it is the hadith? This is Umar ibn Khattab reporting the hadith. You know Umar ibn Khattab. Umar. It says, it says, wa taqlis hada al darb wa taadir hada bainana min sharia masaha. Masah, me, seen, ha, alif, hamza. It says that this punishment, where about different crimes and things, has been handed down to us from the laws of all of the Masihs. Is he trying to attribute the chains to the words of the modern editor who wrote the footnote at the bottom? It says, "Fandur Aziz al Qari al Alim Shara al Islam." So see, dear reader, how great the laws of Islam are. أن القوانين الوضعية في عصرنا الراهن قد اتجهت هذا الاتجاه بعد كثير معاناة وطول عذاب للناس. That man-made laws of our time have moved towards that direction after much suffering and torture of the people. وما زالت بعض البلاد إلى الآن لم تتخلص من عادة الضرب والتعذيب هذه بينما الشريعة المسحاء قد جاءتنا بهذا الحكم واضحا سهلا. And some countries have still until now not got rid of the habit of beating and torture, but the gentle sharia has brought us this ruling clear and easy. Wow! So what's actually being attributed to Omar in the hadith is the saying, warn the thief but do not cause him to fear. Then there's a footnote from a modern editor that comments on the word flogging. And he's talking about how you have the Islamic law compared to the quote-unquote man-made laws of today, in today's world. Uthman is skipping over all of those details, details in the footnote that make reference to the Christian Inquisition, details in the footnote that say, Dear Reader, and this is all being skipped over. This is all being attributed to Omar. Everything else that would point to the fact that this is a footnote is being skipped over. How deceptive. How scandalous. What a fraud. Laws of all of the Messiah. All of the prophets are called Messiah. Here, Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, volume number six, page number 479. I just brought you evidence with volume, with page number, for the Sanad that shows that all of the earlier prophet Sharia was called Masah. Laws of the Messiah, which is all of the Anbiya. Laws are not revealed to other than prophet. It is revealed to who? Prophet. Because nobody gets a Sharia except prophet. Go home and look it up. So that point that you were making is dead now because I've proven it from hadith. The finish, you're ready. done. You're ready. You, you're as as Muhammad again, Hijab said, your trick destroyed. Is Masah. Ma what? Me, seen. No, my friend, a sharia is known all over the Arab world as a sharia samha, and some people use the more correct term, a sharia samha. Uh, let me show you. It is not a sharia al masha, as the typo said. 
it is a sharia as samha starts with a seen an s sound for the non-arabs not with the meme the m sound for the messiah it starts with an s a scene amazing job daughter of christ thank you so much for breaking that down god bless you graduated from the islamic university of islamabad with a master's focused in hadith Osman, a master's in hadith studies is anybody really going to believe that a guy with a master's degree in hadith studies is going to make this mistake? You read the chain of a hadith, you skipped over the hadith itself, and then your eyes wandered down the page to a footnote, a footnote that contains a typo, which by the way, even if the typo read the way that you thought it did, it still wouldn't translate to the law of the messiahs, but we'll get into that. Is someone with a master's degree in hadith studies actually going to make this mistake? No, you thought you wouldn't get caught, but you are busted. You got caught. Daughter of Christ caught you. You did a response video. He got sloppy again. He fabricated again. The deception is high again. Daughter of Christ responded to that. And we're going to get into this all right now. But I just want to make this very, very, very clear. He deceived, he thinks, just by saying, Khalas, my bad. No, no, no. That's not your bad. You lied. You got caught. Your dawah, everything you do should be questioned. Your sources, everything you put up should now be questioned. You are a fabricator. You're not to be trusted. So I'm going to scan and put those evidences in this video as well. So that any other missionary that tries to fool or trick a Muslim, they will have, the Muslims will have these evidences to show them. So what does Al-Masih mean? Here from Al-Ma'ani, from the famous Arabic dictionary, it shows Al-Masih, it is somebody who's anointed, somebody who is blessed, somebody who is a, a king or a prophet. It can be used for prophets generally. Guys, he literally did it again. Imagine. The video that he's responding to is accusing him of being a fabricator, being someone who edits sources, being someone who's a deceiver and a liar. So what does he do to respond to that? He deceives, he edits, he fabricates once again. You can see on the top right there, that's where his dictionary entry ends. Why does he stop it there when the full entry actually isn't complete? because he's trying to be deceptive. He's trying to say that this dictionary is saying that within Islam, within the Islamic usage, that Messiah can be applied to kings, it can be applied to prophets. No, 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 that's not what it says. What he left out from the entry actually says, this definition is in Jewish and Christian traditions. It's not Islamic. This is not giving you an Islamic definition. And by the way, this dictionary is not a theological dictionary. And this definition is not even accurate. But the source you're using isn't even saying that in Islam, any prophet or any king can be called the Messiah or a Messiah. What it's saying is that within Jewish and Christian traditions, that kings and prophets can be called Messiahs. Again, guys, he's lying, he's fabricating, he's trying to deceive. Don't fall for his da'wah to deception. The very video he's doing to say he's not a fabricator, he's not a liar, he's actually fabricating and lying. He's the deceiver, he's the deceptive missionary that he's complaining about. He's the one trying to trick you, he's the one trying to fool you. Muslims, pay attention, check the sources, do not trust him. He's a liar, he's a fabricator. Academics, we don't Google. I used Maktaba Shamila, brought it with me, that showed it as a part of the hadith. If they say that, no, this is a print error, then no problem. We can contact Darul Kutub al and say, you have a print error. If they said this is not a part of the hadith, no problem. We can look at the actual printed book, and if it's not, khalas, my bad. But this is not a lie, it's not a deception. I printed it directly, as you can see from Maktaba Shamila, and took it to them. So here he is again in his response video saying, if it's a print error, if they say it's not a part of the hadith, look at the screenshot you're posting. Get an Arab on your team to tell you what it's saying. 
It's saying in our times. It's talking about the laws that are in our times that are moving towards the direction. It's talking about contrasting the Islamic law to the laws that are quote unquote man made. And it's going on to talk about how there are some countries until now. I do really think Omar is saying the laws of our times until now have suffered so much. They torture the people in some countries till today until now have not gotten rid of the habit or the custom of torturing and beating people. Do you really think Omar was saying that? Just read the screenshot. How are you going to say if they say it's not a part of the hadith? It's clearly not a part of the hadith. Read the screenshot you have on the screen. This guy is so deceptive, so ludicrous. I can't believe anyone takes him seriously. This guy has a master's degree in hadith studies. Again, a master's degree in hadith studies and he doesn't know that this is a footnote. He doesn't know that this isn't a hadith. And we'll get into the print error. We'll get into that a little later. But I just want to emphasize one more time. He's putting into question still if this is a hadith or if it's a footnote. And then he shows a screenshot of the source he quoted. In the quotation that's on the screen, it begins by saying, In our times. Of course, it's someone commenting today, talking about how things are today in our times. Unbelievable. Now we're going to get into how we can know for 100% sure that it cannot be translated the way Uthman translated it, the law of the messiahs. Laws of all of the messiahs. In Arabic, there's something called al-idafa. As Muhammad Hijab said, you have to understand basic basic rules of grammar of Arabic. Idafa. Sharia masaha. Sharia masaha. I will help you. I will help you. Sharia masaha. Al Sharia to Samha. Masaha to Samha. Sharia masaha. Al Sharia to Samha. Masaha. Samha. Well, I brought it with me that showed it as a part of the hadith. If they say that no, this is a print error, then no problem. We can contact. Darul Kutub al and say you have a print error. If they said this is not a part of the hadith, no problem. Idafa is a go to a basic Arabic uh, uh, you know, textbook. What is mudaf? Mudaf is the first thing the Arab students learn. Let's not waste my time with this. Dafa means. What this means is when you have a phrase or a term in this possessive state, which the law of the Messiahs would be in, the rule is that you cannot have the definite article on the first noun. Now in the original discussion, Uthman seemed to show and demonstrate that he had some knowledge of Arabic grammar. He was stating that there are things like indefinite articles and definite articles and he was stating things like there's definite nouns and indefinite nouns and he was using Arabic terminology giving the impression that he knows what he's talking about. So it's not like this is this is Nakira. This is also Marif, the Messiahs, meaning each one of them is going to take that title with Marifa. It also rings the Al here, right? So don't think this is anything different. If he does know what he's talking about, if he does know Arabic grammar, then here's another example of him being deceptive. If he doesn't know, then he shouldn't be using Arabic sources in the first place. To demonstrate this rule, I gave a number of words that even if you're not an Arabic speaker, you probably recognize and you probably would have heard of if you deal with Muslims and with Islam. So the first word on the list is Kalimatullah. Kalimatullah means the word of God, the word of Allah. You'll see here that the first word Kalima actually doesn't have the definite article before it. It's not al Kalimatullah, it's Kalimatullah. In this state, when you have the word of God, just like if you would have the law of the messiahs, then the first word cannot take the definite article. Rasulullah, not Al Rasulullah. It's not Ar Rasulullah, it's Rasulullah without the definite article. Ahl al Kitab, Ahl al Injil, the same thing here. It's not Al Ahl, not the people, it's Ahlu, meaning indefinite noun without the article. Um al-Kitab, not al-Um al-Kitab, the mother of the book. Amir al-Mu'minin, the leader of the believers, not al-Amir. 
In all of these examples, you can see that you never, never, never have the definite article before the first noun. If you want to have it in the of state or the possessive state like that, then you cannot have the definite article before the first noun. Othman should know this if he's trying to flex his knowledge of Arabic grammar. If he doesn't know, then he shouldn't be using Arabic sources. And once again, this is a footnote, not the hadith. This is not what Omar said. And once again, this is a footnote. This is not even the hadith. And in the footnote, it doesn't say anything about the law of anything. It doesn't say the law of the Messiahs. Ash-Shari'atu al does not make any sense at all in Arabic. And it's clearly Ash-Shari'atu al-Samha. Again, if you wanted to say the law of the Messiahs, you would say Shari'atu al musaha not Ash-Shari'atu. It's impossible to make it say the law of the Messiahs as it's written. Uthman pretending to know Arabic or lying, I'm not sure here, but he's definitely a fraud, definitely a deceiver, and he cannot be trusted. He gives false information like this all the time. And if I were to make the video go on and on and on and on, I could show you error after error after error. I encourage you to go back to the videos of DCCI Ministries, Daughter of Christ, lays out very clearly the main points where he's lying. Of course, even those are limited because he lies so much, we have to prioritize and show what are the most important things to point out. In short, wrapping up, he cannot be trusted. Jesus is Lord. Islam is false. Islam requires you to lie. Jesus is the truth. He doesn't want you to lie. You don't need to lie for the truth.